Welcome to another edition of the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. I'm Bob Papa, the Quest Diagnostics Training Center. Giants are back in action this weekend at home as they host the Philadelphia Eagles, the first place Eagles at MetLife Stadium. We got a great show lined up for you. Carl Banks goes to the coaches tape for strategy. We'll hear from Madeline Burke and Sean O'Hara, Amani Toomer. Plus, we'll be joined by Julian Love in our player profile. But as always, I'd like to welcome in my co-host, Carl Banks, two-time Super Bowl champion and Coach Dable. And Coach, I'll start with you. Um, obviously, the game on Sunday didn't go the way you would have liked. As you've had a chance to digest it, how weird does a tie feel? Yeah, I haven't been part of many of those. You know, a tie is, is better than a loss, not as good as a win. So, um, you know, there's a few plays here or there that could have really changed the game, but uh, that's why you play them. Talk about like when, when you're breaking this down with the players and yes, there are a few plays or quite a few plays that says could have been a difference. Yeah, that's always the case in a win or a loss. Yep. But a tie is you can really focus on probably specific times where those plays can be the, the actual turning point of the game. No doubt about it. I think both sides had them. Yeah. And, you know, two evenly matched teams and, um, you know, it was competitive, went right down to the end. And, uh, you know, I'd say you want a few plays back, uh, whether that's by a call, whether that's by a technique, whether that's by an execution part of it. So, um, again, we'll see those guys in a, in a couple weeks here and, uh, you know, get ready for Philadelphia. Yeah, it's almost like uh, we could start the game in two weeks at 2020 and just say, let's pick it up where we left it off. <laughs> there right? you go. <laughs> I mean, um, opportunities in this football game you had the lead they went down they made some plays and scored uh, but then you did have some chances um, talk about the fight that your team had because you could have really gotten down after blowing that lead but yeah. they gave themselves opportunities just didn't execute the plays yeah and i'd say right from the get-go um, you know you have a couple losses and then you're you're playing a big division game at home and all of a sudden you're down 10 uh, really at the start of the game i thought they just competed played the next play you know, we got it to a 13-13 tie and then came out our defense made a, a you know good turnover offense capitalized you know didn't get a whole lot going after that defense stayed strong throughout the game um, and then had some chances there at the end um, and then in overtime but just couldn't capitalize on it coach can you talk about how what you guys do as coaches really helps in reinforce the players confidence because you said they got down not a lot was going on, sure. right? But it seemed like the players just kept fighting, kept fighting, and you guys kept giving them plays. Does that one feed off the other, or is it coaches got to continue to give guys things that they can believe in that's going to work, and eventually it does? No, I think everything feeds off, you know, the coaches feed off the players, the players feed off the coaches. I think it's important as a coaching staff to give the players things they know and they can go out there and execute without a lot of thinking. Um, and those guys have been a resilient group, you know, since I've been here. Uh, I've put them in a lot of situations in training camp, have had a lot of ups and downs throughout the season, whether that's personally or as a team, um, you know, and they're, they're a good group to work with. Um, and they kept competing all the way through and, you know, ended up with a tie. Coach, I want to ask you about Aziz Ojolari. Yeah. He was one of the players that you got back. Um, Evan Neal, also another player you got back. But Ojolari certainly showed what he can bring to this defense when he's full speed. Yeah, a very good pass rusher. Um, you know, we wanted to make sure that he was fully healthy, ready to go. You know, kept him on a pitch count, uh, but you know, made some plays for us again when he was in there. Created another hold, big holding penalty. Got this. I'm like, he's a really good football player for us, and you know, hopefully we can you know count on him the rest of the way. Yeah, and when Thibodeau got that sack, I still don't know how Our Heineke <laughs> held on to the ball. No, he got him good. Uh, you know, from my vantage point, I thought it was almost. Close to a safety, safety. so you know, I went from the highest to highs to oh, what yard line is on. It was on the two still, and you know that would have been a great finish if it ended that way. Well, 70 minutes of football and nothing gets settled. So in a couple of weeks, down in our nation's capital, we're just getting started here on the program. When we come back, we'll be joined in studio by Giant safety Julian Love here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. I've been thinking about it. The one thing we gotta do as a unit is just pick each other up. That'll be great today, baby. Come on. Come on, it's us. DB's on me, DB's on three. One, two, three. 
I think I got my swagger back. Oh, oh. Here you go, baby, right here. Let's, go, Let's get us one. Come on! Come on! Give me that! Give me that! Let's go! Cam Sims gets plastered back for a loss of two. Julian Love with a beautiful defensive play. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. That was Julian Love wired for sound in the Giants game against Washington. And he joins us here on the set. Uh, you able to relax a little bit after over 100 plays? Yeah, it's a lot of plays. Uh, yeah, I'm, my feet are up uh, today and tomorrow, and so I'll have some time to recover. You know, the thing about this game is that it ended like a box set movie, so now we got to wait a couple weeks to the next the next <laughs> version come out so we can see what the conclusion is. Yeah, the to-be-continued type yeah. of thing. Uh, very weird, very weird feeling after the game. Like, it was like, all right, is it over now? Like, it, just sure. anticlimactic almost. You guys battled back from a 10 nothing deficit to get the game tied, then you have the lead, then they come back, chances all over the place. What did you learn from this tie? Yeah, I think we did a lot of stuff well. I think we had a great energy for the defense uh, coming out of the second half. We forced a turnover, which that series in prior games hasn't been the cleanest for us. And so that's something we want to focus on. Our third down numbers were down uh, again. And so there's stuff to build on the defensive side of the ball that, I mean, our energy was great. And so, yeah, there's some plays left out there that we felt we should have had or could have had. Um, now, just kind of carry it over to next week. So when you look at that and, you know, in a normal game four quarters you either win or lose and you say this was the difference in the game right mm -hmm. and then you go into an overtime game and you, you kind of look at it and say this could have ended it right yeah. or this could end we don't get another opportunity we don't get another series if we end this it's over so that's kind of a different learning experience as well isn't it it is you know in the film room today when we're going over stuff it's like oh this play could have been huge for us this play could have been huge for us and so it's like it's a lot of that could have world. And yeah. so, yeah, we every game you search for plays like, oh, this would have been a big one. But now for this type of game, it's like, which one could have turned the tide fully? Sure, sure. So very weird. So you got Philadelphia coming in this week. Um, I know that you've got a lot of prep that you got to do for the Eagles, but you've gone against Jalen Hurts before. Mm. You know how dynamic he is. You know the talent that they have. When you, when you look at Philadelphia, what are some of the things that you guys are going to have to work on this week and work on for Sunday to just make sure that you guys stay sound? Yeah, well, first off, they run similar uh, to like a college-style offense because of you know the read option, the zone reads with Jalen Hurts and the threat he is running the ball. And so that's a problem that they kind of started to build into their offense in the past year or so. Um, and now you add a guy like uh, AJ Brown to the yeah. to the equation, and it you know it amplifies that offense. That's why they've been succeeding because they have just weapons everywhere. It feels like, and on the defensive side of the ball for them, I mean you got two of the best probably corners in the game right now, and uh, you have a, a solid front. And so it, it's no uh, mystery why they're successful this year because they have talented players. You know, you look at that offense, and it's probably it threatens you in so many different ways, right? They've got a really good running game minus the quarterback. Mm -hmm. And then you add the quarterback into the mix and then his scripted runs and then the ability to go down the field. Is this a, a situation where it is literally every man has to do his job and not freelance? Because once you do that, they normally find a way to make you pay? Without a doubt. You know, for the run game, like you said, without the quarterback involved, you got to play sound. Uh, you got to be aggressive. You need to strike. Uh, we got to play on their side of the line of scrimmage, and we got to just be disruptive. Uh, in the past game, guys got to win their one on ones. Um, and it's tough when you have talented players, but that's going to be the story of the game if we can win our matchups. Four years in the league, you got 88 tackles this year. You got a sack. You have two interceptions. You're playing a lot of snaps, and you become a leader. Um, talk a little bit about the evolution of Julian Love, the leader in the locker room, as to a guy who. God, your rookie season, they wouldn't even let you on the field for half the year. <laughs> yeah, it's been uh, it's been a grind. It's been challenging. I think, like you said, the leadership aspect is a part this year that I've really had to learn how to how to be and uh, what to do. Um, but it's come naturally because, really, I can just talk off my experience. Um, not many people have been uh, in this situation, have been playing defense here, uh, who knows everyone in the building, who knows what to do on special teams, like, I'm a guy who people can look to, and that's what made it easy for me to just be relatable. 
Uh, and then for the playing and you know my my high level play this year, I just think of it like this. Uh, I don't think I've been playing better this year. I feel like I've just been playing more. I think opportunity has been given to me, and I'm just trying to run with it as best I can. You guys have had a lot of interchangeable parts, right? You've been a constant out there, but when you have a guy like a Rodarius Williams, right, who was injured his rookie year, then he comes out uh, two games ago and puts a solid game on tape, or you get a uh, flot that comes out there, are you that stabilizing force during the week? Not just games, but as these guys prepare, are you the guy who says, listen, don't let the game get too big for you, and here's what we have to do? Yes, I have to be. Right now, you know, Jerome Henderson, he made a point kind of after the game, like he said, raise your hand if you uh, played in this game and you were starting since camp. And I was the only one who raised my hand. Mm. Um, and so it's just a lot of new faces, a lot of guys getting back, getting into the flow. And my job for them has to be to be supportive, mm. to be that glue for them, to be somebody who can relate to them. Uh, I'm holding everybody accountable, but I also got to build people up because sure. this is, this, I don't want people to, you know, fall to the moment. I want them to rise to the occasion. Julian, we appreciate a couple minutes. Best of luck this week. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, sir. Julian yeah, Love taking you. a couple minutes to join us. When we come back, Paul Dottino and Sean O'Hara, they're ready for this week's edition of Head to Head here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop, Giants and Eagles, MetLife Stadium. Time for this week's edition of Head to Head with Paul Dottino and Sean O'Hara. All right, so let's go head-to-head -head for the Giants and the Eagles coming up this weekend. Sean, who's the first matchup? Yeah, we got a little trench warfare right here. Well, we're looking at Aziz Ojolari off the edge against right tackle Lane Johnson. Now, Ojolari came back from a calf injury, missed most of the season, 58% of the snaps against Washington, so that was a nice surprise, and he had a big game, obviously forcing a turnover on a sack. But the thing about Johnson, three-time Pro Bowler, 10 years in the league, he's about as good as they come. In 11 straight games against the Giants, he has not allowed a sack. I'll tell you something, Sean. They got to worry about this guy. Welcome back, Aziz. A big game back last week, and he's going to need a, another big one this week, Paul. You just mentioned it against Lane Johnson. He does not give up sacks. You can see right here on the season, hasn't given up a sack, hasn't given up a quarterback hit all season long. So he's playing at, at an elite level right now. I think for Ojolari, the one thing he's got to really capitalize on is his speed. Not just the speed, but the fact that he hasn't played a whole lot of football. He's got some fresh legs compared to some of these other guys. So the speed is going to be a, a factor for Ojolari. He's got to get on the edge right here because Lane Johnson, 437 pass blocks this season alone. And to not allow either one of those right there is pretty impressive. I think Lane Johnson doesn't get enough credit for how athletic he is. He's got a great punch. He's got great footwork. So you've got to work your moves. You've got to work your speed move. You've got to work your counter move. Always have an answer because he has really good hands. So uh, look for Aziz and look for that good hand-to-hand -hand battle. Now, knowing that Johnson's so good at protecting the quarterback and the fact that Hertz likes to run around a lot and you got to worry about his legs, do you pull back a little bit on the pass rush to be more containment? Well, I don't think you could pull back on it, but I think you have to be aware of if I'm going to do an outside rush, I can't just run by and let Lane run, you know, run me past the quarterback and now he could step up because he can absolutely hurt you. When you're rushing a guy like Jaden Hurts, you've got to keep one eye on him in case he tries to escape the pocket. Yeah, one other thing to keep in mind, last year Johnson caught a five-yard touchdown pass against the Giants at the Lincoln Field. We don't want to see any of that, Paul. Definitely not. Isaiah Hodgins, though, Giants wide receiver, had a big game last week against former Giant James Bradbury. Now, in each of his four games with the Giants, Hodgins has caught at least one pass. Last week, it was first career touchdown, which was very nice. Bradbury, two years with the Giants before going to Philly this year. He's second in the NFL with 14 passes defensed. It will take a lot to beat him. I mean, uh, he's a good talent, you know, as you were saying, you know, he's long, athletic, um, uses his hands well, so, you know, uh, you just have to stay disciplined in your technique, and uh, we talked about that a little bit in the wide receiver room, so, uh, you know, you definitely got to bring your best against both these corners, whether it's Slay or Bradbury, so um, definitely good talents, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a good matchup. Now, I wouldn't ask you specifically what your fellow teammates may have told you about him, but because he was a giant in the past, can that help you research-wise? Yeah, I mean, definitely, you know, there's, there's a bunch of 
little cues and you know stuff that you could get from different players around the league or you know different people here who maybe coached with him or played with him and stuff like that so you know you try to get as much information as you can you know watch as much film and you know do as much studying and preparation as you can and then you know when you go out there it's about execution. Isaiah Hodgins has really impressed, not just with his route running in the end zone with his touchdown catch, but after the catch, the, the third and 10 last week against Washington where he willed himself to the first down. I think we're going to need all of that again. You mentioned the matchup against James Bradbury. When you look at some of his stats from the season, three interceptions, one of them is a pick six. But really when you look at, at James Bradbury as a corner, just 20% of his snaps have been press covers. So a lot more zone coverage. You're going to see him playing off a little bit, which is really going to challenge Hodgins and his route running ability, but also his ability to find space and sit down in these zones. I think when you look at Bradbury, look, he's playing at an elite level. And I think when you when you have the, the defense that the Eagles do, with on the other side, he's got Darius Slay. I, I think that as, if you're a quarterback, look, you're, you're, you're scared to throw at, at both of these guys. So you've really got to do a good job of running precise routes and making sure you give the quarterback your chest and give him an open target to throw the football to. Yeah, it's a tough task. Bradbury has been targeted 66 times this year and only given up one touchdown pass and only an average of eight yards a reception. Well, that'll do it for Head to Head this week. Now we go back to Bob. Carl, the Giants going against a very talented secondary led by former Giant James Bradbury, who has a pick six for a touchdown. I would believe discipline in your route and being on time is going to be important. It really is. And the discipline part is very important because this quarterback will face a relentless pass rush for the entire game. So being where you're supposed to be is very important to the timing of the passing game. Philadelphia with 42 sacks on the season. When we come back on the program, over under with Madeline Burke here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. I've seen you. You are the best. You are better than me. All right? They can't touch you. In week four of the 2007 season, the Big Blue defense continued a tradition of feasting on Eagles quarterbacks. In a 16-3 victory, the Giants sacked Donovan McNabb a record 12 times, including six by OCU Manura. McNabb takes the snap, drops back under pressure, sack! McNabb flushed out to his right, gets dragged down by OCU Manura. Got sacked by Umanura! Team record by Umanura. Sack number six for OC. I'm not worthy. I am not worthy. A dominant performance by O.C. Umanura and Michael Strahan becomes the Giants' all-time sack leader all on that same night. As we welcome you back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop, time for our Over Under. Here's Madeline Burke. All right, it's week 14 and it's game time. A little over under for Giants, Eagles, Madeline Burke, Sean O'Hara, Amani Toomer, fellas. Let's get right into it. Sean, I'm going to start with you here. Over under 200 passing yards for Daniel Jones against the Eagles. Well, 200 yards sounds very pedestrian right there, so I'm going to take the over. I feel like a 200 yard stat like that, all you need is one or two big throws. And we've seen Darius Slate come up with some big time catches. I think Daniel Jones has it in him. I think he can go for three bills. Three bills. I don't know if I go for three bills, but I think he's going to go over 200 because you're right, it is pedestrian. Hodges is also coming along playing well. Um, you got, you know, the tight ends back. So I think there's a lot of, like, the offense is turning in terms of getting some of its players back. And I, I, feel, I, believe, I believe in Daniel Jones, and I believe he'll get over 200 yards. I don't even know if that's a real compliment, though. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I'm going to go ahead and agree. I'm going to take the over as well. i got to give credit to our producer, Natalie, for hitting that number, though, because Daniel Jones had exactly 200 yards passing last week against Washington. And the Eagles are allowing an average of 203 opponent passing yards per game. But like we've seen in recent weeks, they've been going a little bit more taking some shots downfield let's take the over um all right Amani defensively over or under two and a half sacks by this Giants defense we got I the think half. Uh, the half is I think we're gonna go over not because of anything but, but just because you know when you have a quarterback like Jalen Hurts he's gonna lend himself to, to to sacks so sometimes he'll be trying to run the ball and get caught behind a line of scrimmage those goes down as sacks as well so I think I definitely he's gonna, they're going to go over two and a half sacks. Yeah, Jalen Hurts still a young quarterback, um, but I look at this Philadelphia Eagles offensive line. This is the best O-line that the Giants are going to face all year long, and I'm going to take the under on this because of that aspect of it. I also think that when you look at, at, at what 
the Giants have done. Look, five sacks against Washington. I think this is a different type of quarterback, so he will be able to get out of trouble. I'll take the under, but that doesn't mean that they can't still have a big impact. The quarterback hits and the pressures can be just as effective. This is a strong O-line, but Jalen Hurts has been sacked 30 times this season, eighth most in the NFL. I think if the Giants can close in and they get a couple sacks, I can take the over on this one, too. I don't... I don't see why not. Let's you just want to see you want to see Dexter dance. We get it. Yeah. <laughs> I do. I like the sexy Dexy sack dance. Who doesn't? Who doesn't? Um, all right, Sean. Over under combined point total of forty eight point five between the Giants and Eagles on Sunday. Yeah, that's a big number. It sounds like a lot. I'm going to take the under on this for a couple of reasons. Number one, I, I think divisional games always tend to be a little bit scrappier, a little bit dirtier. I think this is a field goal game, and I feel like with the way the Giants defense has played, everything seems to just kind of become coming around that 20 point uh, differential and 20 to 23. So I'm going to take the owner on this, even though I know the Eagles have scored a lot of points lately. Yeah, the Eagles have scored a lot of points lately. And so I'm going to go with the over. Uh, I think for uh, for the Giants to compete in this game, it's not going to be one of these, you know, field goal type games. It's going to be a game where we're going to have to put the ball in the end zone and for give us an opportunity. I think we're going to go over. I'm going to go ahead and take the under only because the Eagles have scored a lot of points lately and the Giants have not. So for the Giants to have a chance in this game, this needs to be a low scoring game. I'm going to manifest this. It's the under. We're going under right here. Giants, Eagles, you know, keep it low scoring, make it a defensive slugfest on the field. All right. Finally, Amani over under 125 rushing yards by the Eagles. Ooh, I'm going to go over. I think, you know, Jalen Hurts, the fact that he's such a, a good, effective runner of the football, uh, and then he's going to open up for Sanders as well. I, I just feel like this this uh, offense is so diverse in its rushing attack with so many different weapons to do it. I, I definitely feel like they're going to go over. Yeah, I'm going to take the over on this as well. Two weeks ago, they were at rush for 350 yards, and it seemed like everything they did was working. But uh, Miles Sanders, look, he's going to have his yards, and I think Jalen Hurts, he's going to end up having some yards, whether it's by design run or whether it's a quarterback scramble. So I'll take the over on that, but I think that that doesn't necessarily mean a, uh, it's not a negative thing for the Giants. Right. I will agree and take the over as well. The Giants have struggled defending the run this year. The Eagles are a team that can run the ball, averaging over 150 yards on the ground. Jalen Hurts averaging 50 of those yards on the ground every game this season. So I think we'll see a lot of running in this game Sunday at MetLife. But Giants, Eagles, MetLife Stadium, another division game. We hope to see you out there. That's a wrap for Over Under. Let's send it back to Bob and Carl. Well, Carl, you take a look at Philadelphia's run attack. And in the next segment in strategy, we'll look at Jalen Hurts running the ball. But when you look at the backs that they have, led by Miles Sanders. This is a tall order for the Giants defense. Yes, uh, Bob, they come at you with waves of talent. A uh, quarterback who can do a multitude of things, but two running backs that put pressure on your defense in and of themselves in an offensive line that executes really well. And the Giants cannot allow four and five yards to carry on first down as they did last week against Washington. Well, Bob, the four and five you'll take, you'll live with, it's not the 25 and the 45s that they normally break off multiple times a game. Fair point. When we come back in the program, we'll go to the coach's take with strategy here on the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. Sunday, the Giants host the Eagles' first meeting between these two NFC East rivals this season. And time for strategy with Carl Banks. And Carl, we're going to take a look at what Philadelphia does really well. They run the football, spearheaded by their quarterback, Jalen Hurts. Yeah, he is a, a really good passer, Bob, but equally as good a runner, but a playmaker. And here, what you're going to see is a lot of man coverage, right? And he sees man coverage, and he knows that there are going to be some opportunities if the rush lane does not keep its integrity. And the other thing, they're going to employ a spy with second level help in case he breaks. So this is just pure playmaking here by Jalen Hurts. You'll see you got a spy here that's kind of just lurking. You got another one that's going to lurk in case this guy goes, but he can also help on a crosser if it becomes a pass. Okay, so Jalen Hurts knows once this back takes him out, this guy's got to come up. But once he takes that, that defender out, now it's just pure effort and ability by Jalen Hurts. 
Yeah, he's got 20 touchdown passes, three interceptions. He's run for 600 yards, so he is truly a dual threat. Yeah, and when you look at this play close up, you'll see a lot of things that could have gone right. So you've got a rusher here, a rusher here, one rusher. This guy is what started the dominoes to fall. He gets pushed past the quarterback. Quarterback sees an opening here, right? So once he sees that opening, the back comes out. He misses a tackle. The second level, third level, misses a tackle, and he's off and running. He's not an easy guy to bring to the ground. No, and we're going to take a look at, uh, you know, more of him in action and, and what they're able to do offensively. I mean, they score a ton of points, and they go up and down the field on you. They do. Now, here's what they – here's a design run. So once he knows you're in man-to-man -man coverage, he's going to send this back out so that he can pull one guy out. Why does he do that? Let's take a look. Now he knows his center has got one guy to block – and he's got a full lane to run through here because everyone else is man across the front. And once you pull one defender out of the middle of the field, pretty easy. Kelsey comes through, blocks the second level, and he's off and running. So it's very dangerous to play man-to-man -man defense because they know how to manipulate it. And now this is just a classic example. We talked about his individual skills. Watch the arm talent here. Sideline throw. Within two feet of the sideline, he drops it in the bucket. Yeah, and that's Devontae Smith, talented wide receiver, plus they got A.J. Brown. Now, Philadelphia on the other side of the ball, they got 42 sacks this season. They've added some defensive players up front to help slow down the run. You're going to talk about their pressure package. Yeah, their pressure package, Bob, they normally go one, two, three, four, five guys. So they try to give you – kind of a, an equal rush for every guy that you have on your offensive line. And every once in a while, they'll bring a six. But they're just individually good across the board. Now, just watch and see here. You've got kind of a two-man game here, individual, individual. But just watch what happens to the pocket. It just starts to collapse here on the quarterback. It just closes in. It's just yeah. great individual effort. And that guy right there, number 91, Fletcher Cox, who's an all-pro, he makes a lot of people feel a lot of pain on that interior. Yeah, and then you talk about interior. Let's just watch what happens here at this position. Everyone else does a decent job early on, but if you can't get your quarterback back into his drop so that he can set the throw, you're going to have a rough day. And just let's take a look. Right here in the middle of your screen, this is an area that the Giants will really have to focus on and to really ensure that they don't let that happen. Quarterback Oof. really never gets back in his drop, but it's just right, it starts right here. Yeah, this is, um, this is actually a little painful to watch. Yeah, that's a, a five-man rush. <laughs> quarterback really never got set back in. The, by the time his back foot hits... He's got a guy right there. He can't even read the, can't read the defensive coverage. So up front, you've got to make contact. You've got to maintain contact and secure your blocks to give your quarterback a chance. Well, that is a look at what the Giants are going to be dealing with this week against a very talented Philadelphia team. That strategy with Carl Banks, it's brought to you by PSE&G, providing safe, reliable energy now and in the future. When we come back on the program, above the numbers and much more here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. In week three of their historic 2011 season, the Giants headed down the turnpike to Philadelphia for an NFC East battle against the Eagles in enemy territory. Big Blue would take the early lead as Eli Manning hooked up with Brandon Jacobs on the wheel route for this 40-yard score. Manning on a play fake to throw. Has time. He's got Jacobs open wide down the left sideline. Makes the catch at the 20. 10, 5. Touchdown, Giants. Little wheel route to Brandon Jacobs. And the Giants strike first. New York would add to its advantage later in the first quarter when Eli Manning connected with his newest target, Victor Cruz, and a star was born. 
Manning back to throw, zips one left, caught by Cruz, runs out of a tackle to the 40, up to midfield, makes another man miss to the 45, down the left sideline, there goes Cruz, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Giants, 74 yards! And he does the salsa. But in typical fashion, the rival Eagles would counter. And this LaShawn McCoy touchdown run helped give Philly a 16 to 14 lead heading into the fourth quarter. But as he would all season long, Eli Manning led the comeback, connecting with his young slot receiver once again for the go-ahead score. Deep ball toward the end zone, and it's caught for the touchdown by Cruz. He took it away from two defenders. What a play by Victor Cruz. And the New York Giants with an upset on the road against Michael Vick and the Eagles. 29-16, the final score. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. Yes, 2011, Victor Cruz against Philadelphia, Namdi Asamoah in Philadelphia, just the jumping off point for number 80. Now it's time for Above the Numbers as we send it over to Paul Dottino and Amani Toomer. Okay, so let's go above the numbers for the Giants and the Philadelphia Eagles this Sunday at MetLife Stadium. Amani, who's up first? Well, he's our first pick, number five overall, like his jersey number, Kayvon Thibodeau. This is a guy who is going to have a real issue this week going after Jalen Hurts. Not only is he, do we want him to get him down and put pressure on him, but he's going to have to stay con keep contained because of the fact that when Hurts gets out of the pocket, he really causes havoc, extending plays and allowing the receivers to get downfield. He's going to have to have his best game as a pro this weekend because of the fact that we're going up against the, the Philadelphia Eagles and their offense that seems to be unstoppable. That's a great pick, Amani, because when you talk about Thibodeau, tied for second on the Giants with 10 quarterback hits this year, seven over the past two weeks. So he's really been on fire and had a season-high five tackles last week against Washington. Okay, now I have selected... Michael McFadden, inside linebacker, another rookie, oh, by the way. Now, McFadden had nine tackles last week against the Commanders. That is also his season high. He's been in the rotation now for the last five weeks, getting a lot of playing time, Omani, and I think that's important because the Giants like his athleticism. He's quick. He does have range, can get after a guy like Hurts, who's trying to run around and go sideline to sideline. And let's not forget... Philadelphia is fourth in the National Football League. They run the ball 51% of the time. So they will try to grind it out. And they are in the top five in rushing yardage and rushing touchdowns. One more thing. Hertz and Sanders have nine rushing touchdowns apiece. They're very dangerous in the red zone. Michael McFadden is another example of Joe Shane's ability to find talent. This guy is all over the field. He's been showing up for the last couple weeks. And I just really like the depth and what he's been able to do. And these are the type of guys that against an athletic team in the Philadelphia Eagles, we're going to need athletes like this to, to run around and run and hit and really disrupt what the Philadelphia Eagles offense has been doing over, the la over this past season. Okay, Imani, so who has to be below the numbers this weekend? Ooh, should I even say it? A.J. Brown. This guy is having a phenomenal season. Uh, eight receptions last week, 119 yards, two touchdowns, and with our depleted secondary, he's going to have to have hopefully a broken shoestring or something because this guy is, is going to be a problem. We're going to have to deal with him, and it can't just be from one person in the secondary. Wink Martindale is going to have to come up with a scheme to specifically stop this guy. It may open up other things up, but the Giants cannot allow A.J. Brown to beat him this weekend. He has been dangerous all season long. For the season, nine touchdown catches. That's tied for fourth in the National Football League. He's top seven in the league in receiving yardage and in reception average at about 15 and a half yards a pop. Now, there is one team that did slow him down. It was Washington. The only loss that Philadelphia has had this season. It was back in week 10. Four targets, one catch for seven yards. He claimed early in the game he had a sore foot. And that was part of the reason he didn't do so well. Yeah, I should do that too. Whatever. <laughs> That'll do it for Above the Numbers this week. Now let's go back to Bob. Carl, A.J. Brown had a big game last week against his former team, Tennessee. Devontae Smith shows up each and every week. The Giants have to try to limit the big plays from those guys. Yeah, uh, Brown is the guy who self-proclaims himself always open. 
and he normally comes up with the ball when they throw it to him. But Devonta Smith is kind of the quiet riot on that team. He just produces, and he's a big play receiver as well. And between Kayvon Thibodeau getting a sack last week and Aziz Ojolari back, they need those guys to really have big games against They do. They have to have big games. They have to impact both in the run versus the run and versus the pass. We're going to take a timeout when we come back. Coach Dable rejoins us here on the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop. We're always studying what the defense does uh, and how we can attack it uh, in the pass game as well as the run game. Play fake, he's back to throw. He looks left, throws left, throws it for the touchdown! Isaiah Hodgins! Two veteran corners, you know, smart. They both they both play football for a long time. They understand their games individually. You know, I think they've, they've played well this year. Mills fires, picked off inside the four. Bradbury. They're a good team. They're an explosive offense. They got a good defense. We got to play our best ball, and, and uh, that's the goal. That's what we're preparing to do. Welcome back to the Coach Dable Show, presented by Stop and Shop. It's the Giants and Eagles MetLife Stadium on Sunday. First of two meetings between the two teams. And, Coach, you take a look at what they're doing offensively. They're 11 and 1, and Jalen Hurts is playing literally at an MVP level. Absolutely. Uh, ha have some familiarity with Jalen. He is one of the best competitors I've ever been around. Um, great young man, leadership, very talented. Uh, no surprise, the things that he's doing, um, just uh, he's the best. Coach, when you look at the weapons they have offensively, and he is probably a three-in-one weapon because he can throw it, he can run it, and he's just as, as good a scrambler as they come yeah. on non-designed runs. Is the key just to have your discipline up front? There's going to be some plays that he's going to be better than just yeah. because of his ability. But for the most part, it really does come down to just the integrity of, of what your scheme is. If not, if you try to freelance it, it just makes matters worse. Yeah, he's usually a better freelancer than the, the people yeah. that he's playing against when he needs to. But he's, you know, he's afforded a lot of time with that offensive line led by Kelsey. He's doing a fantastic job as he's, you know, the last however many years he's played and and the weapons around him they're, they're tough to they're tough to defend they have a good running game uh, they have good coaches you know Nick Sirianni and I worked together uh, he was a receiver coach when I was a coordinator at Kansas City he's kind of from the outskirts of Buffalo too so a little bit younger than me but um, fantastic coach very talented team I think how he's done a great job of putting together that roster uh, with a lot of very talented players really at all levels um, so it's no surprise they're 11 and 1. Yeah, and those receivers put a lot of stress on your defense because they make contested catches and they can run right by you if they need to. Yeah, they can, they can contest a catch, they can run after catch, they can run by you. They got you know good quickness in and out of breaks. They got a good scheme. Um, you know, they're the best yeah. team in the league. Yeah. Let's go to the other side of the ball. Fletcher Cox has been doing it at a high level. They got outstanding corners. They added Sue. They added Linval Joseph. Plus, they got the rookie who they just got off injured reserve. So they're a multi-layer defense too, aren't yeah. they? All three levels. Uh, say they're tough to run it against. They're tough to throw it against. But how they've been playing, you know, their offense has been scoring a lot of points. That allows them to go ahead and do what they do really good, which is rush the passer and, you know, cover and. Um, it's just a challenging group all the way around. When you look at it, uh, it'll be our biggest challenge yet. Yeah, and when you look at it as a challenge, Coach, the I guess the biggest one is trying to keep your offense on schedule and not having the second and longs yeah. or the third and really longs, right? It's just it's trying to stay in manageable situations, understanding that they're going to make a play or two, but you just can't compound it with things like um, unforced errors, like procedural penalties and sure. things of that nature. Yeah, no doubt about it. You know, you know, we call it, you know, just playing in the, the positive. Mm -hmm. So when you're playing on first down or second and one to five, it's it's a lot easier to call a game um, and play in the game as an offender when you're in those situations. Once you get into those advantage defensive situations where it's, you know, a high percentage pass and they can go ahead and pin their ears back or run their blitzes, um, makes it challenging uh, regardless who you play. Coach, um, maybe to educate the fans a little bit in this sense, <clears throat> fans, media look at it a certain way. They look at how talented they are and all that other stuff, what happens when they put on the film, not realizing that everybody that's playing in this league 
has made the NFL. Yeah. And they all believe in their own abilities. Talk about that as juxtaposed to how it's always perceived on the outside. Yeah, in terms of the talent level, you know, they're, everybody's good uh, in the National Football League, and every team you play is good, and they're well coached, and um, that's why they say any given Sunday, it's a uh, you know a league that's been designed for parity really across the mm -hmm. you know conference, across the division. Um, the more you win, the lower the draft pick. The less you win, the higher the draft pick. The, when you're in a claiming order, it's all you know. It's based on wins and losses, and uh, the margin for victory is is this small. Um, so each week you got to get ready to play your best football, um, and then ultimately got to go out there and execute for 60 minutes. And the team that usually does that is the teams that win, um, regardless if you know they got 20 all stars or you just got to play good, solid football and, mm -hmm. and good complementary football. Coach, we appreciate a couple minutes as Thanks, always. Coach. Best of luck this week. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Uh, hey, Giants fans, this week's game is presented by Grayscale the official digital currency asset management partner of the New York Giants. And if you're coming to the game, make sure you get there early. We got the white towels for you. And this is presented by Citizens, the official bank of the New York Giants. So for Carl Banks, Coach Dable, and our entire crew, I'm Bob Papa. Thanks for joining us for this edition of the Coach Dable Show presented by Stop and Shop.